time. Ding's Max, nine centuries, 42 half centuries. This incredible venue is inspiring the best of the best to deliver again, as they always do, because this place is very special. It's the one and only Alexandra Palace. <laughs> Please welcome a player emerging for a third Masters appearance, his first for nine years after winning the Welsh last February. A hugely likeable character on and off the table. He's got the best walk-on in snooker because he's a cider drinker, but we call him the Milkman. Here's Robert Milkins. <laughs> And his opponent, 16 years after winning the first of his three Masters titles on his debut, still going strong. Great to see him loving life and the game again. Winner of 22 ranking crowns, he is the one and only Jester from Leicester, Mark Subby. <laughs> Year's Masters, who will be the eighth man? Will it be the man with three titles to his name or the man with to his name? Let's find out by handing off to our commentary team for this evening of Neil Folds and Phil Studd. Just one more spot to fill for the completed Masters quarter final lineup and one of the most decorated players in this great tournament's 50 year history, Mark Selby, three times a champion, one of only six players to have won it that many times against Rob Milkins, reigning Welsh Open champion, making just his third appearance. What an occasion for him. What a thrill to be introduced to this capacity Ali Pali crowd. Here we go, best of 11 for the right to play Mark Allen in the last eight. Thank you, the first frame. Robert Milkins to break. And on the face of it, Neil Selby, a warm favourite, but we've seen what Milkins has done in recent times, the way he played against Sean Murphy to win the Welsh last season. He's here on merit. Y yes, I agree with everything. You know, Selby is favourite, but as you rightly say, you know, Milkins has surprised us all okay. in the last couple of seasons by winning two ranking events. Just while we might as well speak on a bit because yet another insect here. Um, I, I think that his achievement playing at the Crucible and um, after the disturbance and the, the session was called off against Joe Perry, he played an extra session. He was miles behind in that match and he came through to win. So we shouldn't put anything beyond I think, uh, Rob Milkins, I would say, on that. Good job, Neil Robertson didn't see all that going on with that insect. Smashing red to start with. The extraordinary uh, scene last night, didn't we, of, uh, in the Robertson match where a free had to put a glass over the top of an insect and a piece of card underneath it with 2,000 spectators watching all that instead of the match. Amazing, really. Who, who knew that would ever make the, the uh, Ali Pali? In snooker, expect the unexpected. But for Selby, I think he'll be especially motivated this year. As good as his overall record is at the Masters, it's been a decade since he last got past the quarterfinals. So it's been a bit frustrating for him in recent times, as are the Flyers. He's been playing pretty well this season without doing anything particularly special, as Rianne indicated. But, of course, last season we saw Six. a real return to form from Selby after a difficult 12 months. 
won the WST Classic in his hometown of Leicester and of course was engaged in that wonderful world final with Luca Brussel. And his record over Milkins is handsome. Ten of their 13 meetings, although Rob did beat him on his way to that Welsh Open last season, so recent happy memories of facing Selby for the Milkman. Yes, he, he didn't quite have the angle on the black he wanted, just flicked the red directly away, but he played an even better shot in the way by just hitting both balls and bringing the black on, so a good shot. Encour encouraging start this for Selby to a match which he, as we say, is expected to win, but at the Masters he would never take nice. a player for granted. They're all top class, they're all winners. Into the bunch. Yeah, the angle on the green was perfect. And the target was quite big. Good shot. Very special memories here at the Masters for Selby, not least because it was his first professional title before he won a ranking event. And he won in 2008, beating Stephen 24. Lee. Didn't pop that as well as he wanted to, and that's why the cue balls run off a bit. Yeah, he's, he's way out on position there, isn't he? No way did he want to be below the, the bolt line for the next shot. He'd probably be able to make it all right. But there's no way that's how he played it. Oh, that's a good recovery shot. I mean, that could not have been played any better. 27. Wonderful triple crown career for Selby in all three of the big events. Nine in total, including four world championships, of course, the same number as the great John Higgins, who bowed out this afternoon. The winner of this to play the man who denied him, Mark Allen, in the last eight. Selby's had to wait a long time to get his campaign underway. He joked with Rachel that it's probably the longest he's been in the tournament for a many a year because of his recent difficulties in getting deep in this event. So he's certainly due. 34. Yes, if you can just stop Milkins getting settled in or even getting any table time, it could uh, bring about a really promising start beyond this first frame. If you can just keep him in his chair. That's... What a miss. What a miss and what a completely unexpected shot that he played there. Why did he miss that? I mean, he wasn't really doing anything with the cue ball. Very surprising. Well. So Rob Milkins at the table unexpectedly after that surprise error from Selby. As he mentioned ahead of this match, his form hasn't been terrific this season. Suffered a tough loss against Ronnie O'Sullivan at the UK Championship, a match that he had golden chances to win in the decider, but couldn't take them. And that proved to be significant. Hang on, that always looked wide, so Selby not Rolling punished for the miss black because it cost him a place in the top 32 on the one-year list. Therefore, he won't be in Leicester next week for the World Grand Prix. Yeah, I mean, there's been a few casualties of that event, which uh, 
who are here. Milking's not the only one Luca Purcell, as we know. He's uh, the world champion. He won't be playing in that event next week, even though he's world champion. I suppose there was an argument the world champion could have been in it, but that's not it, it, under the rules and the, the layout of the event. What? Oh, Wilson as well, not there. Anyway, Shelby might not have been punished, but he'd be relieved to be back at the table very quickly after a pretty glaring miss. Well, this is too straight, isn't it? They look to make it easy to get onto a colour. Clever no. attempt, anyway. It's straight. You do see that shot occasionally. If it's so straight that you can't get away from the bottom cushion. Try and pot it and wriggle the cue ball out of there, which he played well, but he overhit it. Yep. And that's why now he's nominated yellow and the break ends. Put the yellow on the left cushion. Selby plays the game, Last if you like, by now. the book, which is uh, nothing wrong with that. And then you've got a 36 point lead, but with the yellow towards the left cushion, that slightly increases his chance of winning the frame percentage wise. Milkins, when he first turned pro, was known primarily as being a terrific natural talent. Very quick player, great potter, but as he's matured, he's become pretty adept in the safety department. So he can certainly compete in that regard with Selby tonight. He's going to have to. It's another very clean, long range road. We saw one at his first shot of the evening. Very good. He actually got into the cue ball a little too much because this cue ball sort of screwed across a little too far. Wanted to be closer to the black than he is because now getting on the next red is not as easy as it might have been. See the red that goes into the same pocket at the bottom of the bunch. So he wouldn't have wanted to have to play across, but he has executed it well. If you, took, if you could take one shot out of this start, Eight. that black he missed, it would be a very promising beginning. A couple more reds would make this frame completely safe for Selby. This is no gimme with the rest, but one you'd expect him to get. As usual, holding the butt of the rest rather than having it flush to the table or even the rail of the table yeah I mean that's just a personal choice I can't imagine it makes a lot of difference either way but you do see either the two ways you described there just to keep the rest on the table anyway the angle to go into the four reds if he wants it's there well three reds and the pink He needs one more of them. 40. One more pop. Fifteen. So frame one, you'd like to think would go to Selby from here. A couple of snookers to tie required. For Rob Milkins. He had the chance to make his mark in this frame after the aberration from Selby Back on the black. 15. But Mr. Red to the right corner, and Selby now sitting pretty. 51 in front, so a couple of snookers to tie as things stand for Milkins, and he's in one.
He seems to be queuing very well. The black really came out of the blue. And it didn't matter as it turned out. Yeah, I mean, Mark Selby is you know, one of the all-time greats. He does sometimes, when favourites struggle to win Six. matches, maybe as convincingly as, as he might. You know, he can get bogged down in matches. Seven. But you know, when he's good, of course, he's absolutely brilliant. And he's due a big run at the Masters, having had a barren few years where he hasn't really played as well as he can at this venue. Fourteen. well and truly won, but it was a terrific pot nonetheless from Selby. Nothing like hogging the table early in a match like this. Keep your opponent in their chair. Nice. Get them to watch you pot potting the balls. Twenty-three. Twenty-eight. So all in all, we'd be happy with how the first quarter of an hour of this match, or nearly that, has gone. Yes, Mark Selby, three times Masters champion, monopolises the table as his family watches on. The Jester off to a flyer, he leads, 1-0. Breaks of 35 and 41, allowing Mark Selby to get off the mark quickly in this final Masters First round match here at Alexandra Palace. Rob Spencer, our referee, just having his uh, attire adjusted. <laughs> Selby, who hasn't been able to add to his impressive tally of 22 ranking titles this season. He did make the title match, of course, at the British Open in Cheltenham in early season, losing a cracking final to Mark Williams. He made the semi-finals of the European Masters and the Invitational Shanghai Masters, where he lost to O'Sullivan who's in action tomorrow afternoon, by the way, against Barry Hawkins. Thank you. The second frame. Mark Selby to break. Mark Selby breaking off in frame two. Six, of course, is the target. Mark Allen to play the winner. And that's coming up on Friday evening. What a battle it was this afternoon between... Alan and John Higgins, not the best snooker from either of them, but Alan came up with a superb pressure clearance in the decider. Brilliant opening red, which carried plenty of risk, and that was the difference in the end. Higgins visibly upset to lose another tight one. It's been a bit of a theme for him of late. Yeah, I mean, I've watched all of that very with great interest earlier. I would say the other thing that kind of was a factor in that match. It was 3-1 to Higgins at the mid-session interval and the frame that he didn't win, he should have also won. He missed a green with the rest, 25 in front, lost a re-spot, which uh, Mark Allen knocked in off three cushions. So, you know, 3-1 could have easily been 4-0 and that would have been a slightly more daunting position to have to come back from. So maybe that was also an early reason why Higgins didn't win. Well, it's another mistake, and it's given an early in once again for Mark Selby. Well, 
Well, positionally, of course, having followed that red, no colour available. Mark Selby, what? He's always been a very interesting player, Milkins. He's very instinctive. That, uh, I would say our current world champion, Luca Brasella, is a kind of a younger and, you know, obviously as world champion, a better version. He just points the cue, hits the ball, and when he's good, he can be absolutely lethal. But it's not, it doesn't feel like it's a sort of a honed technique as much as other players. It's more instinct. And on a good day, it's brilliant. But He's not having a good day yet, but if he's left that red to left centre, that would make it the uh, the early signs of not a very good day. He was round very quickly to have a look, wasn't he? Fearing the worst, and he was right to be. Well, I think the problem he's going to have is with Selby's safety game, Milkins is going to find it very hard to keep Selby out, especially if the long pots are going in. Yeah, Selby might be able to put him in a lot of trouble on too many occasions. Wow, that is an absolutely sensational split. <laughs> and he deserves whatever kisses he gets there because the one thing about opening the bunch like that, the ball to look at is the cue ball. If it doesn't veer off and hit a cushion and goes sort of straight down the middle of the table, then you're seeing the, the perfect contact with the bunch. We may get a chance at some point to see that again because it was spectacular. Here it is. What's the cue ball? It goes straight back down the middle. That means you've got every chance of the bunch splitting as he would like. Great shot. Certainly looks good in the early running, Selby. Something of a man on a mission, I think, this year at the Masters. He has this great record here. But not recently. Cheers, Mark. Thank you. Well, certainly, I would say not by design. He's held the pink spot. The black spot is free. So that's where Rob Spencer is going to have to put it. I don't think 30. that uh, Selby will be too concerned. I think on the black spot for now, for one shot anyway, is uh, a chance to get reds around the black spot opened up. Fourteen. Yeah, the angle he has on is pink. Obviously, goes into the two reds above, and he could clear the decks and bring more reds into play. That'll do him red to middle at worst. Twenty. Well, it's not so easy, is it? Obviously, the pink's covering the red to the right middle. Run this through gently onto the blue, seems to me. Another clean pot, didn't touch the sides at a pretty acute angle. having won his maiden professional title here at the Masters back in 2008 at Wembley. He then regained the title in dramatic fashion in 2010, probably one of his greatest ever final performances, actually. He was playing Ronnie O'Sullivan. He was three down with four to play and won the remaining four and then made it a hat-trick at the expense of Neil Robertson in 2013. He was then runner-up to O'Sullivan, beaten handsomely the following year. 24. As defending champion. Since then, four quarterfinals, but nothing better. Five. 
25. Yeah, we know he's a great player, but I think a very proud stat of his would be that he's beaten the best of them all, Ronnie O'Sullivan, in the final of all three of the UK, the Masters and the World Championships. And uh, not many people were ever going to be able to say that. Third. Thirty-one. He's only missed one ball so far, and it was that surprise black out of nowhere, but proved not to be significant. Thirty-eight. Certainly queuing well. Forty-four. As you can see, absolutely dead straight, which means it, you can run it through pink to the opposite middle or you can just screw back and play the pink. The same pocket he's playing this in suit. 45. So hunting in and looking very much like he's going to take a 2 0 lead. He's got to get behind this pink, and you wonder how 52. he wouldn't win the frame here. Got a very slight angle on this. If it was dead straight, he'd just be running through onto the two reds below into the right corner, but he has a, just a slight angle which brings him close to those two reds. So the difference of just a half a ball's width means that the shot he's got here is not quite as straightforward as it might have been. Get the feeling that he's tr just going to push one of those two reds across towards the right corner a little bit. And he's held instead. Just wants another ball, another red. 58. Thank you. No problem. 59. Only 59 remaining, so this pink will surely set the seal on a 2-0 lead and a very impressive start from Selby. And Rob Milkins has only potted a couple of balls in this match so far on his return to this Premier Invitational 65. event. He's waited a long time to get another crack at it. 66. Doesn't have much joy with his draws, does he? Let's be honest. Previously played O'Sullivan and Robertson. Yeah, that's true. But of course, unless you're in that top eight, you're going to be playing someone outside it. And he's always been in a position outside it. And there's very little 72. 
of a place in the draw to hide, isn't there, from all these guys? There's so many top players around. You know, I think um, a good master's draw is not really a thing, is it? 73. I mean, the fact that he has actually beaten, Milkins has beaten Neil Robertson twice at the Crucible is, is testament to what a good Samson. player he is. Anyway, for now, it's all Selby. Eight. He doesn't appear to be under any pressure in these couple of frames, bar one ball that he's missed. Eighty-six. Eighty-seven. He has a high Masters break of 141, one of only 31 in the history of this tournament, of 140 or more. Of course, we had the maximum from Ding. Actually, talking the maximum, the, the cube where it's finished is not similar to where Ding's cuba was, maybe just a bit further to the left, but it was like this shot actually that he had from yellow to green. It was almost identical with uh, the same result this time as well. Yeah, he's queuing really beautifully. Selby is in a lovely rhythm. This is very measured snooker from him. Pretty ominous from Rob Milkin's chair. 97. He's hardly had a look in so far. He missed that red in the opening frame after Selby had surprisingly erred on the black, but aside from that, he's not had a look in. 101. The 31st Masters century. His wife Vicky watching on approvingly. 106. Please don't shout out when the players on the shot. Rob Spencer cracking the whip. But Selby is in his own little bubble here. I don't think he's going to be phased by any extraneous noise, the way he's queuing at the moment. And for Milkins, well, he's got to be patient, back himself, that when he gets a chance, he can take it. In the meantime, he's watching Mark Selby pot them all. A tremendous clearance of 119 from the three times champion. He's looking ominously good. He leads two frames to nil. Picture of concentration, Mark Selby with that steely look in his eye this evening. He started superbly 2-0 with a century just now to boot. And tomorrow afternoon, Rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan continuing his bid for a record-extending eighth Masters title. Standing in his way, Barry Hawkins, very impressive last evening in seeing off Neil Robertson. So that should be a cracking encounter. As usual, our coverage getting underway quarter to one. UK time, quarter to two, CET. Players will be underway just after one o'clock local. And Mark Selby, well, he's now just three centuries away from 800 for his career. Only four players stand above him in the all-time list. The aforementioned Robertson, Judd Trump, John Higgins, and of course O'Sullivan at the top of the tree with 1,232. And for Rob Milkins, well, he's waited an awful long time to get back to the Masters. He's here entirely on merit after his tremendous triumph last season at the Welsh Open to regain his place amongst the game's elite. He hasn't had too much to look at so far, such has been the excellence of Selby. But, of course, there's still plenty of time. That said, he'll want to make his mark early, give Selby something to think about. Quite a few fans still... A little late taking their seats. Okay. And now we're Thank ready to go for frame. frame three. Robert Milkins to break. Rob Milkins getting us back underway. Just two pots from Milkins so far in the opening two frames.
Yeah, Rob Milkins desperately looking for some table time, but I think one way of getting table time, of course, is if his safety is good, and that was a nicely judged shot. He seems to have covered all the edges of the reds for an escape back to bulk anyway. It's a difficult shot, but someone like Selby, you know, there's always the chance he'll miss it on one four. side, but I don't free think he ball. bargained on a free ball. I'm not entirely sure I know what Milkins can do with it. Brown ball, there's always you. a chance now. You know, there is more than 147 on the table. Now he's taken the free ball, but... Yeah, we all get quite excited about that, but it usually lead to a lot. That's a very fine shot, though, and it was in it. So it was a bold move to take it on. What? As he mentioned to Rachel, he's been playing in the Championship League in the build-up to the Masters. He's put in a good few days' practice, having felt like his game wasn't really there in the way he wanted it to be. He's clearly going to have to play out of his skin tonight to beat Selby because Selby is very obviously queuing very well. But that was a very positive shot to knock in the free ball from distance. Oh, hang on, hang on. Wow. Yeah, you had to roll it in because I think nothing goes to the right Six. corner. It has to be right middle. And, uh, yeah, I, th I think it was only the fact that he played so gently that it just fell in, didn't it? It had nowhere else to go but in. But he is on still Seven. for more than 147, so it's always kind of a bit of fun, this. I don't think it'll happen, but you never know, I suppose. Be more than happy to see it. Oh dear. Well, that's the end of all that. Robert Milkins, seven. I've seen a few miss to that part of the pocket, you know, that left corner. A couple this afternoon and already Selby, but that one was as close as anything, and it, I thought it was still going to fall in, actually. Maybe on day one, when the cloth's brand new and silky smooth, it might have just slithered into the pocket. the other thing about Rob Milkins, he's a very quick player. And he's, uh, he's one of those average shot time can be very rapid. turned professional back in 1995 and it took him 27 years to finally crack the ranking title code at the Gibraltar Open. Very emotional moment for him to claim that title. Ironically, it came at a time when he was struggling both on and off the table. He'd had a bit of a set to with the governing body after some ill-advised behaviour out in Turkey. In the weeks before that tournament, he hadn't been in any sort of form. He showed up and went all the way to the title. And then, of course, last season eclipsed that achievement in winning the Welsh Open so brilliantly against Sean Murphy, who was playing tremendous stuff at the time, 9-7. Proved to be a very lucrative week for Milkins because, of course, in the process of winning that title, he also bagged the European bonus of £150,000, that series of events. Finished top of the tree, denied Ali Carter that prize by beating Murphy in the final. So, another player 
blooming in his 40s, playing the snooker of his life late in the day. Interesting shot there because he put the he was so tight on the cushion that uh, yes he's got protection with the black over the pocket which means all the reds could end up on top of it and that side of the table's out of bounds as far as potting one but this is going to have to be a good shot for Milkins now playing safe off the bunch coming to the right of the pink where it is. He was looking at getting in behind the green there. That could have been very troublesome had he done so for Mark Selby. The danger in a scenario like this is that the frame can become very bogged down with the corner pocket obscured by the black. The reds gradually mm. gravitating in that direction with nowhere to go. I didn't expect that. I thought he would be very able to stop hitting pink, the only ball that really could stop him getting down to the bulk end. There's always the makings in a situation like this of a long exchange of safety. <coughs> Which usually ends in the black being potted rather than a you know, red being potted. In the shape of a foul shot. But we'll see how this unfolds. Trouble here, though, isn't he? Goodness me! This is uh, he's playing the two cushion glance off the top red. This is a hard shot to play. And he's done what often happens now. As he left a free ball, that would not be any good to him, and that could end the possible stalemate. I reckon he Mark hasn't. There's a gap. It's not free ball. No. Back. Mark Selby inquiring of Rob Spencer whether it was a free ball, which was. Uh, quickly answered in the negative no but the, the problem is Milkins didn't leave a free ball there but if he was to miss again with a slightly different angle it could end up being a free ball because he's coming around what would be four cushions towards yellow and pink and well, all those areas and yeah I think well. he might try the same shot but the free ball if he misses again is definitely a, a, in play there's also the risk of being warned next time if he misses that he'd have to hit one. And clearly see Red's full ball. Well, he's in trouble, all right. Despite the fact that he can hit Red's cleanly, as you point out. Looking at some kind of containing shot. Well, that's all right. Him, although Mark Selby is... The master of a situation like this, he could get Milkins in all kinds of trouble from here as well.
So Malkin's not in absolute trouble, as he might have been, but he's still got the problem of somehow finding a route back to the bulk end. This is the problem, you see, you get involved in a, embroiled in some kind of tactical exchange against Selby and it's hard to win them, he's so good at all that, puts a lot of care into every shot. <laughs> well, at least the uh, Selby stalemate will end as far as that's concerned, I didn't think that was going to reach, it just barely touched the black but it's still dropped in, it must have been hanging over the pocket. Milken spoken to the other day and he was saying you know people think I just pot and score I can play good safety and I think that's right but it will be <coughs> under the microscope in this match and uh, there's an example of what he was saying is a beautiful shot appreciated by the crowd we love the big breaks and the dazzling snooker but they're also ready to Congratulate the other side of the game, the tactical stuff, and that was perfectly executed. And at least this exchange is giving Milkins a few shots, which he had precious few of in the first two frames. Selby completely monopolising the table. And now it's Selby with something to think about from a safety angle. He's got the two cushion glance as well, which we've seen missed. Foul. Quite interesting yes. there because there was certainly a gap between green and pink and I wonder if there's a full ball contact available there. Rob Spence having a very long look down the line of it because he's going to go back. Back, yeah. But he's going to have to put it in the right spot because if there is a full ball contact, Selby's going to have to know about it because he would get warned if he missed again. I think you could clip it, yeah. 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 Well, as you can see, you can definitely hear the full, full, full ball. Way, Fraction. Check it. Well, where he's yeah, plonked it there, it's anyway. I think it is, we'll check it. Dan, can you check it for me? The other thing is, because you want the balls absolutely replaced to the millimetre or millimetre, because if you're going to play that escape, you want the balls to be where they were to, to make the adjustment. To hit one this I can't time. see a difference. Looks right to me. Just have a look, Mark. Williams is the view that it's bang on or as near as makes no difference, yeah, and right. I think he's right about that. Yeah, he is right. It'd be quite interesting to see what happens should he miss again there. Oh, I'm going to get my wish. Foul. A miss. Because now, surely, he gets warned, doesn't he? Robert he could get through that gap. Yeah. He could have to take the red on, I think. He can pop one. So he can pop that red. And now, it can make him a dangerous player, because he'll warn him. He'll play a different shot. Probably not the red, and clear up. These things happen. I want first month. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ben, can we check it again, please? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I don't think Mark has realised what's going to happen here because he's going to get the. Uh, <coughs> read his uh, rights here. Surely not going to play the two because you escape. So marginal. It might be yeah. Mark, there's a slight, slight tolerance, so if it, I'm only talking a little bit, so if you, you think a bit more this way. He's not going to play the same shot, though, is he? Surely. 
It is incredibly marginal. I mean, you're talking about less than a millimetre, I think. Well, before you, before you do, I've got to say something to you. <laughs> Rob, do you agree with the position? Yeah. Mark, if I have to call the miss after the strong, I'll want the frame to as well. OK. <laughs> He'd forgotten about that because he said he was going to play the sham shot anyway, and he, he definitely won't do that. He'll try and pop this. So the third strike, he's got to hit a red this time, so he won't be playing out of the snooker, and he can pop that red into the left corner. I don't know why he wouldn't just play it. I know he's doing all kinds of damage, but he's doing more damage if he misses the red altogether. Just the containing shot, and he's left something to the middle. easy not the kind of pot you want to take on when you've had precious few so far this evening just five pots from Milkins we've had protracted safety in this frame which is already significantly longer than the first two and it's not really got underway yet That was close. It was nearly a fantastic red, but nearly's not good enough against Selby playing well. Now, I think when you see it again, it was the extra pace put into it. it would, if he was able to have played it slower, I think it would have gone in off the jaw. But not that time. Not as he meant it, of course. He got more than one kiss on a red. Blue, Blue in behind the green is what he'll be attempting here. Off the right cushion. Mark Selby one. This is very much Mark Selby territory, isn't it? Awkward frame, reds clustered along the top cushion. Milkins trying to make something happen, a bit risky. Well, he needed that second kiss on the, the blue to stop the cue ball rushing down towards the reds again, which I think he seems to have got away with it. There was a bit of frustration in that shot. He didn't look... Uh, 
like he wanted to be involved in all this safety. Uh, Red is, as you can see, is not possible. Green's come to Milken's rescue. Selby breaks the deadlock. Pop and the certainly the cue ball control was great there. Eight. No. He's not really going where he wants it. He's willing it across for the green. It's not too bad. He wants to ensure that if he is playing on the red up the table here, that he doesn't get stuck behind the green when it's respotted so that he can't pop the red. to be done for Selby at this visit to turn this into something substantial but for Rob Milkins he's already looking a bit frustrated he had very little to go at in the first two frames a lot of safety in this one tried to conjure something with that attempt at the long red just now no joy Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very difficult uh, balance for Milkins. Yes, he wants to express himself and attack. He doesn't want to be involved in long tactical Six. games. But even then, in a potting and scoring game, as good as he is, I don't know how much better, if at all, he is than Selby. In fact, I think I know the answer is that he's not as good as Selby when it comes to you know, the more positive version of the game. You've just got to play your best, whatever that is. Well. And the stats emphatically back that up. Selby so turned pro four years after Milkins. And he's on 797 career centuries. Rob, seven shy of 200 for his career. And it's an element of Selby's game that's rather overlooked. He's so synonymous with being granite-like and determined and tactically brilliant. But he's one of the best scorers in the history of the game. As mentioned earlier, only four players have made more centuries than him. It's an incredible tally. And that's another good shot from Selby. And these pots are going in in the centre of the pocket. He may be unlucky in being hampered here. Well, I think he's really unlucky because he could not have played this better. 24. And like you say, I mean... Touching ball. I mean, to finish touching ball, I don't even think he can play the other red now. He's just going to have to play away from this one because it would be a fiendishly difficult shot queuing over the top of that ball to pot the one to the left corner. Touching ball, of course, is not a terrible outcome for him. You can just play.
play directly away from the red, deemed to have hit the red. Yeah. You might try and get him behind the yellow. He'd love to sneak it in there. Well, that's still. He got a little bit uh, greedy there. He tried to do too much from touching ball. He's left a red on. It's not Selby like that last shot at all. A big roar from this capacity crowd. They want to see a real contest this evening. And the way Selby started, there is the danger that yeah, sure. he could make relatively light work of this match. So vital that Milkins makes his mark sooner rather than later. His first real look at something since frame one, a real opportunity. Got half a chance at the beginning of this frame with the free ball. Five. And how good a chance it is remains to be seen. The Reds awkwardly play still. Wanted to be on the green because that gives him a nice shot down to open the reds. From the yellow, it's a more difficult shot. Rob's getting that all the equipment out of that little case of his again. So this shot playing around the angles, trying to move reds, difficult. Swing in the cue ball round at, at pace. I always think when you've got that extension on your cue, those shots are really difficult to play anything but slowly. And he's done damage as well. He's left that red. 30. Quite honestly, he got nowhere near this yellow, did he? Overcut it by a mile. His pot success at the moment is way down. 63%. Selby, on the other hand, 96. Well. Nine. Well, it, it looks like he, you know, you'd think he might go and win the frame from here, but he has still got work to do to make all this happen. He's only got a lead of, well, it'll be 20 points when this is potted. So he will need the two reds that are very close together on the left side, or one of them. So he might be trying to make plans 16. to bring those into play. Seventeen. 
24. Yes, one of those awkward reds after the next one is going to be required for Selby to extend his lead. Uh, for him to get high on the black, he's going to have to play a little bit of pace on this, though. 25. And he just wriggled in. And has he got the shot? I could have seen on a, a different table that might have just rattled straight over the pocket. Screw onto the right red and get on the left red. Beautiful. That's a nice shot. Really well played. Precision from Selby. 32. And you have to say he's playing exceptionally well. This has been a long frame. There was a lot of safety early on, not helped by the fact that the black 33. blocked the left corner pocket. But for Rob Milkins, nothing really happening for him so far this evening. He's had one or two half chances, not much more than that. Precious little table time. Selby, though, has looked razor sharp. 40. And already, frame four is feeling like a must win for the Milkman. Forty. I suppose Milkins would be a bit annoyed away that that last visit ended for him. Got on the yellow awkwardly. And the one thing he didn't want to happen was once he did miss the yellow, he left Selby that chance because he went into the reds. But he left it absolutely A1 for his opponent, not for him. 50. He's finding the back of the leather almost invariably tonight, though, Selby, with his potting. Bang on. That lovely little cannon that he executed just now, which has clinched him this frame. 53. Mark Selby is monopolising the table and dominating Rob Milkins in the early running this evening in our final first round match at the Palace. He now leads 3-0. At work, but for Rob Milkins, well, at the moment, staring down the barrel a little, 3-0 behind. Mark Selby's playing exceptionally well. He's made very few mistakes, rock solid as usual in the tactical department, but scoring well and queuing very sweetly. And for Milkins, he just hasn't had a chance really to get his cue arm going. We know how dangerous he can be when he does so, but at the moment, Neil, he's being starved of those opportunities. Yeah, I mean, the problem playing Selby is that uh, you don't quite know how to approach it. You know, you can't help but get a little bit stuck in the safety uh, battle, which you don't want. You know, he's a quick player, instinctive player, and he wants to get in amongst them. He tried to do that in that last frame by opening things up, but it didn't work either. So, you know, you try plan A, plan B, plan C is just to be your very best, I think, when the chances come. You can lose your fluency against Selby because he just ties you to the cushions, the bolt cushion, and puts balls safe when he's in front. He makes all of the, the things that you want to happen not happen. You know, he just really... What? He's got to win this frame, you know, 3 0 down. We've seen well, they're not going to be coming back here, those kind of situations turned around this week. But frame four, I think, is an absolute must win. And, and queuing very sweetly. And for Milkins, he just hasn't had a chance really to get his cue arm going. We know how dangerous he can be when he does so. But at the moment, Neil, he's being starved of those opportunities. Yeah, I mean, the problem playing Selby is that uh, you don't quite know how to approach it, you know. You, can't help but get a little bit stuck in the safety uh, battle, which you don't want. You know, he's a quick player, instinctive player, and he wants to get in amongst them. He tried to do that in that last frame by opening things up, but it didn't work either. So, you know, you try plan A, plan B. Plan C is just to be your very best, I think, when the chances come. You can lose your fluency against Selby because he just ties you to the cushions the bolt cushion and puts balls safe when he's in front. He makes all of the the things that you want to happen 
not happen. No, he just really... What? He's got to win this frame, you know, 3-0 down. We've seen well, they're not going to be coming back in, those kind of situations turned around this week. But frame four, I think, is an absolute must-win, and he's just got to do what he does best. I mean, he's in this Masters because he's won two ranking events, he's in the top 16 in the world, so he knows he's good enough, but having beaten Selby before, he hasn't done it as many times as he's lost to him. No, it's an odd one, really, isn't it? It's uh, the occasion suggests Selby will win this match, doesn't it? What we've seen. Take your seats, please. Reversing. He saw Milkins playing that shot where he whipped the cue ball around the angles. He hit it slightly thick, but it's still a good shot. He's such a bustling player, Milkins. Wants to get on with it. But not being allowed to yet. Here's a chance. He must start taking these. Isn't that the way when you're struggling a bit, your opponent's playing well on another day, he cannons the black nicely and he's off and running. Yeah, either that or he just slides past the black and gets onto it into the right corner or anything but what did happen anyway. Robert Melkins won. He'd be annoyed by that. Such a small amount of table time that uh, you want a better outcome than when you put a red than that. Milkins' triumph in their most recent meeting at the Welsh Open on his way to the title last season, very much the exception to the rule. You have to go back to 2011 for his previous win over Selby and 2002 for his only other one. Selby having won 10 of the 13 encounters. So he's examining the side of the bunch, not necessarily for a plant to any corner pocket, but more in playing off the bunch. He doesn't want a red to drift over a corner pocket, which can happen. The key ball in behind Brown might be the root map here. Now he's taking the key ball wider. <coughs> across the table more. Pretty good safety shot. as was that one from Milkins.
So he once again taps the table in acknowledgement of a good safety shot. There's a little sliver of that right hand red sticking out, which you can just try and catch the edge of. So once again, Milkins is sort of stuck between a rock and a hard place, if you like, in the You've got to play safe when you've not got a pot available, but he doesn't really want this exchange to last so long that he ends up getting frustrated Foul. again. In the mess. Mark Selby, four. Yeah. Another one that's got to be replaced to perfection. Ben, can you bring it up? I couldn't see Rob. Ben you can Williams, his wingman, comes into the equation here. That way, towards towards Bark. Bark yeah. cushion. Towards Bark cushion, yeah. 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 No. That way. Right. That way slightly. This way. Yeah. <coughs> slightly back, towards you. Yeah, that looks about okay. right to me. Rob. Yeah, Mark. Well, miss. Well, Mark Selby four. So now we have a situation where Rob Milkins will be warned because the three strikes and out rule will come, and you can see Reds. And uh, Rob does not look about. He'll have to hit one basically, or forfeit the frame. Might be a bit further, but not much. Okay. Rob, you're about to call a mess after this stroke. I'll award the frame to your opponent. OK. No, he's going to play the same shot, you know. He's playing the same shot. Oh, well, he's hit it. <laughs> I think he played that enough, you know. And, and of course, it's... Uh, Mark Selby, four. It's going to probably cost him anyway. Yeah, the red coming right up the table wasn't part of the plan. Right over the green pocket. Just to further frustrate Milkins. I don't know if he plays billiards or not, but... He, that was a classic long half ball in off. So Selby with an easy starter to get back in. Well, of course, the point being, it is a foul, clearly, but uh, it's not a, a miss because he hit one and went in off, so the three strikes rule doesn't come into play. I mean, the known players many years ago would, would, would deliberately go in off to avoid a, a bigger problem. But unfortunately, the in-off was no good when the red was up there as well in the bulk end. Eight. Well, there was noise there. Mark Selby eight. Something like a plate dropping or something. Yeah, and Selby's furious. He wafted his cue in frustration about that. Yeah, he, when he played this shot, there was a noise. Something happened in the Century Club. Might have involved drink. Goodness me, he's enraged, isn't he? Yeah, three 0 up, completely in control of this match, but that's what it means to him. We know he's had a pretty barren run in this event in the last decade, having dominated it really previously with three titles, but he was fuming there.
tell you, there's a look, both players have got their own frustrations here. Milkins, because he's in danger of falling 4 0 down, I think he's thrown his cue down in his own disappointment. Mark Sell, because he's put off on the last shot, looked up. I tell you, I wouldn't want to be that person who made all that noise because the look he gave them and the cue swiped the cue. Might not count for anything, though. He's got another oh. chance. There's the cue that he sort of chucked to the ground. Hands in pockets, the body language not oozing positivity at the Milkman. Understandably, it's been a tough return to the Masters so far tonight. Nothing has worked out for him. And if he loses this frame, well, it's almost impossible to see a comeback really against this guy. Eight. Yeah, nicely played. Just had to play that with soft screw and sort of drag. Left hand side to hold for the red. 60. <laughs> 70. I think the two reds above the black, he'd love to just nudge into those, bring those into play. Yeah, beautiful shot. That's as good as it gets. Didn't look much, I know, but it was the perfect cannon. 24. Twenty-five. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. And uh, no reason why this break should end any time soon. The two or three loose available, which would take him beyond the winning line, points-wise. Forty one. to just push the cue ball through into the bunch if he wants to or just play on the loose red which he decided to do because he's a consummate match player and he knows red black and then maybe the red to the left and really this frame is over he doesn't need those five reds out in open play it's not his problem Forty-seven. 
48. Thank you. So just run it through off the cushion up for the left hand red to the opposite corner. And now we're at the point of frame ball and slightly 55. ominous look for this match. Milkins very quiet in his chair. And uh, anything's possible in this game as we know. Turnarounds from 4 0 down can happen infrequently, yes. But it doesn't feel like on the balance of play with anything like that's going to happen here. There's been a real intensity about Selby this evening, which you could argue is nothing unusual with him, but he arrives at this Masters 63. acutely aware that his record of late has been modest and just the way in which he reacted to that frustration of being put off by the noise as he was on his shot just now even though he was 3-0 up at the time, completely dominating this match. Just shows how hungry he is for a fourth title. And at the moment, yeah. he 63, is a red-hot favourite to move into the quarterfinals. Nothing has gone Rob Milkins' way, but Mark Selby's been excellent in all departments, made a century in the second frame. He's completely monopolised the scoreboard, and he's just two frames away from the last eight. He leads the Milkman at the break. Four frames to nil. 41 in the opening frame, 119 is 31st master century in the second, 53 and 63 in frames Thank three you. and four. Rob the Milkins' highest break Robert is just 13. And his pot success is way down at 61%. That is why the scoreboard is so lopsided. It's a deficit that has only been overturned on a handful of occasions in the history of the Masters. If Milkins is looking for a crumb of comfort in this situation, well, Neil Robertson was 4-0 up to Stephen Maguire four years ago. Maguire won 6-5. That is a sublime piece of queuing. Well, it went straight in the centre of the pocket and the cue ball stopped in the middle of the table. This is beautifully struck, it really is. Anyone who plays this game would be absolutely thrilled with that shot. Even some of the other players in the quarterfinals. And uh, you do wonder how this match can turn around. We, the sports and unpredictable I mean, no one would have predicted that uh, Robert Milkins would have won that Welsh Open from the start or the Gibraltar that he won previously Seven. so he's capable of surprising you but right now I'd be a little surprised Eight. if Selby didn't win this match comfortably but he's still going to win two frames so we'll see it's not just the deficit is it it's the way in which Selby has built this lead he's played exceptionally well his own pot success is at 95%. Pretty rare that you produce that return and don't end up on the winning side. 15. He looks tremendously motivated to improve a modest recent record in this event. 16. Only two players in Masters history have won more titles than him. O'Sullivan and Hendry.
23. <laughs> Thirty-one. Thirty-two. Well, he really wants an angle, and he has not got one. That's not um, the shot he was looking for. You can imagine two balls with further down. Yes, he can possibly just squeeze a slight angle out of this and get on the loose red. Know that he was looking to get into the bunch on that last shot, he just didn't hit the position shot to blue quite hard enough. So it'll be another plan in trying to achieve the same goal of getting the reds open. Thirty eight. It's okay, red to middle, although he's not straight behind it. 45. Might have the red to the corner as well, actually. Yeah, you can just squeeze through for that one. So it's even better than the red to middle. Quickly, it looks. Big cries have come on Rob. Can Milkin still make a contest of this? These chances have to be taken. What? Yeah, you watch him. He seems to be up and away from the shot sort of quickly. He didn't stay very still on it. Almost like he was getting a bit ahead of himself and thinking about the next shot, which, of course, it wasn't one for him. That was the red stayed out. Eight. Nine. Apart from anything else, Milkins will be feeling that his pride is being a little hurt at the moment by the lopsided nature of this match. So even if winning it at the moment is a pipe dream, he wants to make his mark, make an impression, at least give Selby something to think about. Avoid the dreaded whitewash. That's the first goal. He's waited a long time for this opportunity in this event. But he is the kind of player who, if he strikes up a rhythm, can be very dangerous. If he can get 12. a sizable break, that could inspire him. Control cannon. I think he played it well because he hit it harder and he knocked reds on cushions, 17. which clearly didn't want to happen. That pace was a nice, easy pace into the bunch. Got to use a trace of left-hand side, though, if he plays that red, it seems. I think he'd be able to play it. It's a pity if he's not on that red near the right corner, you know. 
He just would have to drift a little bit of left hand side on it. He doesn't want to take the risk. Hopefully, he potted that one instead and uh, is able to continue on his merry way here. And what a great chance this now is. There's nothing safe. Still behind, but I'd rather be in Milkin's position now than Selby's in this frame. It's a great chance as well, Philip. Look at the ball, so there's nothing difficult. The black goes to either corner. <coughs> 24. Already his highest break, which is a measure of how difficult the evening has been. 31. Very little table time, bar the odd safety exchange, virtually no rhythm, but this is a chance to rectify that. Get himself on the score sheet. Thirty-nine. Forty. Forty-seven. Forty-eight. In a position like this, very often you see a player not necessarily play on the black because to play 55. up the table would mean easier position on the yellow. Yeah, 56. that's what he's done, and that's absolutely A1. Just put the blue and hold. 56. Taken these nicely. It's very good. It wasn't looking like it was going anywhere for him, this match. 61. Then the Selby, fairly unexpected miss. 63. Still needs up to, and including the brown, though. I don't see that being a problem. But until you've got a frame on the ball, you never very confident about anything. 66. Average shot time in this break, 16 seconds, which is obviously swift, but there's been nothing rushed about this visit. It's been measured from Milkins, and this to stop the rot. Well played, very well played, given the circumstances. And listen to that roar. This crowd won a contest. They may yet... 75. When you're staring down the barrel as Milkins was at the interval, you've got to start somewhere in your bid to recover, and this is ideal. Not just winning the frame, but winning it with a really good break, a confidence-restoring visit, a bit of rhythm at last in that cue arm, all the things that were absent in the first four frames. Excellent. Superb. A wonderful clearance of 88. The Milkman delivers in the nick of time he's still got a lot to do but he's closed the gap to three four one reigning welsh open champion will be feeling a whole lot better for that superb clearance of 88 after mark selby had got in missed on 45 a rare error from selby this evening who's been outstanding but milkins was ready to take his chance he took it quite beautifully and he is so good to watch when he's in full flow he's got so much natural ability and we saw plenty of that in that Break, but of course he's got to keep it going. Thank you. Is that the start of something? Thank you. The sixth or just break. Just a blip for Selby. Mark Selby to break. Frame number six of a possible eleven. Mark Allen awaiting the winner on Friday evening, fresh from his six-five victory earlier over John Higgins. Tomorrow, Ronnie O'Sullivan. First up against Barry Hawkins. Yeah. He's off and running again. 
Nice shot, wasn't it? And uh, played at the sort of pace not to take him into bulk. Which means he fancied the pot quite a lot, it seems. Getting on to a red from the green here will not be easy. I think the red above the black from over on the left side is a possibility. Could go into them, though, if he plays it with pace. That's what he's doing. Chances his arm. He's on target. That's unlucky. He, he didn't do anything wrong there. Four. Well, splitting the pack and hoping for the best. But he executed the shot well. Selby not really hurt by that little... Robert Milkins, four. Minute break. But Selby certainly just on the back foot a touch. Not much, because he's 4-1 up, but just given something to think about. Milkins has turned up. And he's one of those players, isn't he, Milkins, who, if he does get on a roll, can be a... He does his damage quickly, as you say. Yeah, I mean, he was 7-2 down, wasn't he? I mentioned it earlier, that match against Joe Perry that uh, ended up three sessions because of the protest at the start of the beginning of the match. Came back to win. You know, Selby, different ball game playing him. That's the problem he's got, of course. Yeah, and he'll be disappointed to miss that one, having... Just stroked in that magnificent 88 clearance. It was a good chance to get back in and do more of the same, but an immediate reprieve for Selby. One. Yeah, a little bit too much pace on it. He wanted to be on the top Five. red of the two, just directly above the black. He has got a shot at it, albeit over some of the reds in the bunch. So a thin red taking him down towards the bulk end of the table. get past the yellow to reach the green, he's nominated green. Again, trying to get on that red. It's a quite a good shot. He's not perfect on it, but it's the top red of the two. Directly no. by the black. Straighter would have been absolutely ideal.
12. Well, he just starts <coughs> to sort of uh, unlock this frame, isn't he? But there's plenty more unlocking to do because other reds from here on in become a little more difficult. I don't know if the red by the pink is on. He just looked at that one. Into the right corner, that would be. One of only six players to win this three times, but has fallen at the first hurdle in three of the last four years. I mean, he got a lot of spin on that top spin. It, it's tried to send the cue ball across into the bunch and to 20. the right, but all of what he had on it did not get him enough speed to get him onto a ball. Let's see it again. The key will veers across with all the spin on it. There it goes. But not bringing him a next red to aim at. So the break ends without going too far. When you lose control of the ball you're trying to play safe from, that's the sort of thing that can out of character mistake from Selby. He's trying to push the red onto the blue full ball, and then the red would have stayed up there. Had the blue come down towards the cue ball, that of course wouldn't have mattered to him. So, sort of moral victory for Milkins winning that safety exchange. He's kind of all Four. right, <coughs> but he certainly overscrewed it. He wanted the cue ball to stop a long way, long way short of where it did. Oh no, he's ended up overcutting the red by quite four. a margin and he's left plenty. For Selby. He took quite a long time on that shot. Unlike Milkins, he wasn't happy with it, was he? You could sense that. Well, cheers, well, thanks. He didn't get very close to it, he just didn't like the shot from where the keyboard ended up from the previous one. Selby with another chance to get the lead back to four frames. Eight. Nine.
16. Seventeen. Selby has a great record over Milkins, but he also has a lot of respect for Milkins' ability, and he knows that he can be dangerous, even facing the kind of deficit that he has this evening. So he'll be keen to snuff out any thoughts of a significant comeback at this visit to the table after that excellent 88 just gave him pause for thought Milkins has had a couple of chances in this frame but they haven't amounted to much Yeah, I think they could be more different players when you think about it. Selby's very um, textbook, plays all the percentages, right. won't be rushed. Yeah, Milkins is he's, he's pretty unconventional. You know, he can be fast, he can be unpredictable, he can unnerve you if he starts to pot them. So they're very different players, I think. But like you say, there is definitely respect, as there should be, for what he's achieved. And he did come out on top on his way to the Welsh Open title, of course, against this man last season. That was a shorter match, best of seven. Twenty. Twenty eight. There's Vicky, Mark's wife, watching on. Pretty happy with what she's seen this evening, no doubt. It has been an excellent performance overall from Selby. He's still operating at 95% with his pot success. That's outstanding. Hasn't made too many errors. He missed the red in the previous frame, and Milkin stepped in impressively, but that has been very much the exception to the rule for the three times champ so far tonight. It was actually not a dissimilar red that Milkins missed to allow Selby back in in this frame into that right corner, overcutting it by quite a margin in Milkins' case. And now pretty close to clinching this frame. Another red after this one would certainly seal it. Thirty-five. He's landed on the blue if he wants to take that and uh, then you would say he could make a few more but again he doesn't have to and at the moment he doesn't do anything that he doesn't need to. Just looking to find a way over the line in this frame. 39. This has been 39. a very focused visit from Selby keen to just dampen any thoughts of a stunning Four. comeback from Milkins and that red surely set the seal on this frame only 43 left 52 the margin and for Milkins the frustration a couple of chances in this frame to try and build on the momentum of the previous one but it's not amounted to any more than eight points 46. Now he's going to have to do something that's only been 
five times in the 50-year history of this Masters come from 5-1 down in a best to win. One of the players who achieved that was our own whirlwind, Jimmy White, 21 years ago against former World and Masters champion Peter Redman. This is the red. If you remember, Mark Selby missed a not dissimilar shot earlier into that pocket. But, of course, this has proved a, a vital one. 54. Milken shot before that miss. He overscrewed a green from down the table, come in a slightly awkward 55. spot. And he sat down and had time to think about it ever since. Sixty-one. Sixty-three. Selby's fourth break of over 50 this evening. Century in the second frame. He scored very heavily throughout the evening. Milkins with just that 66. one break. Prior to that, his best, just 13. He left himself a huge amount to do at the interval. And 70. now he's at the point of no return. Mark Selby, 70. Mark Selby is on the cusp of her last eight appearance at the Masters in a showdown with Mark Allen. He now leads Rob Milkins by five frames to one, one away from victory. Milkins looking a little downbeat. No wonder this is the red that he missed when he had the chance to potentially build on his previous frame when he knocked in that 88. Just a reminder, of course, the second round, the quarterfinals get underway tomorrow. Ronnie O'Sullivan, seven times champion, up against former finalist Barry Hawkins from a quarter to one UK time. Radzi and the team with all of the build-up ahead of the player's entrance just after one o'clock local. But for Milkins, well, if he were to pull this off from here, it would be one of the greatest victories in the history of this tournament, quite simply. Only five times, as mentioned, has it been done before. 5-1 to 6-5. Most recently, Stephen Maguire, who achieved it against Neil Robertson four years ago. Prior to that, Selby did it against Stuart Bingham. Mentioned Jimmy's victory over Peter Ebden from the brink. The only two other players to have achieved it. Dave Harold against John Parrott in 2001, and the great hurricane himself, Alex Higgins, against the grinder, Cliff Thorburn, a three-times Masters champion in 1981 in their semi-final. Thank you, the seventh frame. Robert Milkins to break. Robert Milkins breaking off in frame seven with a nigh on impossible task, you would think. It does seem that way, doesn't it? But uh, I suppose if you don't give it your best shot, you don't uh, ever find out. Who knows? But the frame he won, he made a, a really nice break, Milkins. The frame before last, a fluent break of 88 from a position of no strength, 45 nil down. But if he can do that for five frames, then that's going to be something to see, quite frankly, from here. A sort of halfway mistake, if you like, from Selby, where he missed the red by so much the double kiss took place. And on another, on another day, if Selby were struggling, could easily have left a red off that mistake. An easy one, anyway. And this does go for Milkins. Well played, right in the middle. There's no doubt that the crowd. Want Milkins to make a contest of this? Yeah, I think it's for, for more than one reason. You know, obviously they want their light to be a little longer, don't want a, a swift Eight. exit tonight. And also, he's just a likable player, likable person, Rob Milkins. Someone that you'd Nine. 
always wish good things upon. There was a lot of people in snooker very pleased when he won that uh, big bonus last year for winning the Welsh. Anyway, back to this, and he doesn't 60. feel like he got a good bounce off the cushion, I don't think. He was a bit out of control here. He had no real way of knowing where the balls were going to finish. So all of a sudden, things have got a little worse as far as the positional side of this break. Pink ball. Robert Milking, 17. Sure, quite where this exchange is going. Milkins might not want a re rack 17 in front, it's not a huge amount, but it's still where do you draw the line on that? Touching all those reds or two reds, I think, has to play away. Selby here. Just trying to drop into the side of the bunch. Rob, it's touching that one. Okay. Don't help, really. Touching again. It won't help, really, said Rob. <laughs> Hasn't lost his sense of humour, at least. This isn't quite the comeback to the Masters nine years after his previous visit that he'd anticipated. Not so far, anyway. But he has run into an informed Mark Selby, who has given every impression this evening that he is determined to right the wrongs of his more recent visits here, having not got past the last eight for a decade. Available for Selby, he's back in. Of course, even if he does win this evening, as at the moment seems highly likely, he's still got to get past Mark Allen to improve upon that recent record. That could be a battle royale on Friday night if it happens. Yeah, I mean, we can't preempt it, but you're right. I mean, straight away you think about that World Championship semi final from, uh, well, last year, 2023, last season, which went on until I think about one o'clock in the morning, or certainly not far short of, because it finished on the morning of the final, Luka Bussell had won earlier in the day, so he definitely started that final the fresher and 
He played brilliantly. He was a very deserved champion. But that semi-final was a bruising affair, wasn't it? Mark Selby, Mark Allen. Yeah, you're right. It probably Six. hurt Selby a bit with that first session of the final in mind, which he lost 6-2, even though Brussel was, as he had been throughout the tournament, brilliant. Got back to within a single frame on the final Seven. evening before Brussel won the last two. That break of 88 at the moment, feeling like nothing more than a consolation for Rob Milkins. 50. Well, that'll do. He's quite a tall player, Selby, so I think it's Jesse can reach across at this without the aid of the spider or anything. And of course, being right handed definitely helps him. Yeah, he can reach this. Cue ball coming in quite close to the black. Yeah, unavoidably. 23. Would love to have seen the black come away from the cushion more than it has. I mean, rolling these in has not proved difficult, but with any extra pace needed, then they can stay out. Yeah, good shot. He tried to keep pace down to a minimum on that. And the Selby contingent 30. must be pleased with the, the evening's work so far, but he's now going to finish it off. 31. Ping ball. Well, he's taken on the ping. Now, this is a slight risk, more so than he would like to have had to take. Well played. <laughs> Leaning across his left hand red, just as we see it again. There's going to be that red on the right, just could be under his body, unless he needs the rest on this. Then, of course, it won't be in the way. 37. There you can see now, he's just, just away from that red. So no waistcoat foul likely. 38. Forty. 
46. Mark Selby has been all business this evening from his very first shot, which was a convincing long-range red right in the centre of the pocket. He's been clinical. Scored heavily throughout. His safety, as usual, rock solid. But a steely determination about Selby, I think, 15. to improve on his recent disappointing record at this event, one that has given him so many great memories down the years. His first ever pro title 52. when he beat Stephen Lee before he won the Welsh Open, his first of 22 ranking titles. Beat O'Sullivan in that cracking final from three down with four to play. Beat Robertson. For the but that was all a long time ago now, and he's very... 59 creates some more memories for himself at this great event. Yes, and he's on the brink of, of winning this match, a match he was expected to win. You know, if a lot of people have said that their 60. banker of the round would have been Selby against Milkins. That uh, tournament pot success is very interesting at the bottom of the screen, isn't it? Because that tells you that technically he's played the best of everybody. I mean, he hasn't been... Maybe pressed 67. as many as much as other players have been in this first round. And uh, just as he's about to pop match ball, there was another crash from somewhere, which of course was completely accidental. But there is a, a century club, which is a great addition to this wonderful venue where people have wined and dined. Maybe it came from up there. Anyway. I think it's a good night's work for Selby. I think he couldn't have achieved much more tonight, whether it means he goes all the way and people will believe that. Well, I look forward to finding out. But it's been a very clinical performance, which ends Mark there. Selby, 74. Annoyed to miss that, which shows how determined he is this year to make a splash once again at the Masters. Mark Selby looks like a man on a mission. Three times a champion, hasn't been past the quarters for a decade. He's determined to put that right this year, and he's overwhelmed Rob Milkins for his 11th Masters quarterfinal appearance. He wins 6-1.